All right, we're back with the 1987 Suzuki LT250R. If you guys missed the last video on this machine, we picked it up for 1350, which is a pretty good deal for an LT250R. Typically, these go for 2000 to 25 um, in my area. So, very good deal, but it did have one problem. Ran good, drove good in first gear, but then once you got past first gear, it would slip out of gear at high RPM. So you shift up to second, you're going, and it would just come out of gear as you're driving it. And that would happen in third, fourth, and fifth gear as well. So we ended up tearing apart the whole engine, getting that out of the frame, doing a full tear down. And we actually found that the shift drum was missing the bolt that goes into here from the other side. So that locks that shift drum into place because without it, you can see it's pretty wobbly. But once you put that bolt in, that'll lock that into place and uh, that won't move. So we looked over all the bearings. Crank looked good, bearings looked good. All the gears on the transmission looked good, no missing teeth. The shift forks were all good, not bent at all. Everything looked perfect. That was the only thing that was missing, was that bolt holding that drum on. And I'm pretty sure that was the culprit. So what I think happened was the guy put this thing back together and just forgot to put the bolt in there. Um, pretty common mistake. You can see if you go through here, there's actually a cap on the other side you can take off and you can get a socket in there to put that bolt on after you install the transmission. So we can't forget to do that today once we put this back into the machine. But we ended up getting a brand new Wiseco piston for it and a gasket kit. We're going to be rebuilding this whole thing today and hopefully get this thing to run and drive properly. It's been about two weeks since we've owned this, so let's get going on the build and uh, see what happens. We're working on the left side of the case here. We're going to put a little of the assembly lube on the bearings, get that going. We've got the drum here. You can see how perfect that is. So worn drum is going to have metal showing through this layer right here. See the metal wear through here. And that's from the shift forks riding on it. And these go in here. So if something's binding, it'll rub like that and eventually you'll see a wear through that shift drum. So this one looks really good. No wear whatsoever on here. There's a washer right here. This is gonna go straight down into there. And again, that bearing is very smooth and good to go. So on this particular machine, it's kind of weird. You've got a spring like this that's gonna go underneath here and ride in these grooves like that. So that's gonna go down first before we put that shift drum down. It's a little tricky to get on there. So you're just gonna go like this. Like that. And that's gonna sit right there until we put the shift fork on. It's gonna sit like that. And just... so this one's gonna go in like this. And it'll keep that tensioned. All right, so transmission's gonna drop right into here. So you can see this is where the sprocket's going to ride on. So that's gonna go down first. There we go. Just like that. Now we can get the shift forks in. 
So this is going to actually go down and tension that little arm down there. You might have to play around with it a little bit when you're doing this. Let me get that in. Sometimes take off the uh, shift drum here. Drop that down into there. It's gonna lock that into place. All right, so these shift forks are stamped. It says 1A and 2A right here. So 2A is gonna go down first. So let's get that one in first here. Slide that in. So you go to the first groove on the drum. And then 1A will follow. And that one goes into this one. And that goes into the third groove. The, the fork over here goes into the middle groove on the drum. It's hard to mess up. <laughs> Get these locked in place. know it's good because you'll be able to spin the transmission. If it locks up, you know you did something wrong. So everything spins and you'll be able to twist the drum and go through the different gears. There we go. You can see down there as you spin the drum, you can see that spring tension. It will pop into different gears, see that? And every gear should be smooth. All right, we've got the right case half over here. A little assembly lube going on. bit brake cleaner just so that the gasket maker can stick to it really well that'll take off all that dirt and oil I like to use the ultra black because it's oil resistant right there Go around the whole case here Make sure every surface is hit. So that tool 
did not fit on the shaft right here. So we just pounded that shut and that worked out pretty good. So we'll get all the bolts in there and let this thing dry for a bit. All the case bolts are torqued down. Before we forget and make the same mistake the previous owner made, uh, we're gonna get a bolt and a washer in here to lock that down. If drum is right there. And we wanna lock that to that bearing right there. All right, put a little Loctite on the bolt here. All right, perfect. All right, now the counterbalance gear is gonna go on. So, you can see it has one side that's attached. It's gonna go through this way. It's gonna sit right in here like that. Second half of the counterbalance gear going on. Lining up with that woodruff key. A little tricky. There we go, just like that. There we go. Go on like that. Line that up with the woodruff key. Alright, like that. You're gonna have your washer. And then your nut. And we'll torque that down once we have the crank gear in place. All right, we're getting the shift cam drive in. So you can see these have little springs on the back that compress. So you wanna compress it. Put that in there with the teeth pointing towards the shift shaft. Then you're gonna have a plate like this. It's gonna go on here. And a plate like this. That's gonna go right there. And then screws like that that we're gonna lock tight in. All right, then we've got the crank gear here. We've got a tapered side on the, the spacer here that's facing up. Let's get that in. So you wanna spin that to get that in. All right, and then we've got the bigger gear that goes on. So you can see that end sticks out, that end's flat. Flat side goes out, and this is gonna have a dot on it right there. That's gonna line up with the dot right here on the counterbalance gear. Just like that. So that dot lines up with that dot. Perfect. All right, then we've got our second gear, same thing. This side sticking out, faces down. There's no markings on this gear at all. I can go on either way. Washer, and then your nut. All right, we've got our shift shaft going through. Got our spring on there. No washer. This is gonna sit. All right, there. Just like that. All right, we've got the shifter on. Just wanna make sure it shifts through all the gears. So right now, we're in neutral. There's first gear. Second. 
third, fourth, fifth, sixth gear. Awesome. All right, kickstart mechanism going on. Washer spring on there. Get that going. This wraps around all the way. Goes right there. Next. Washer. Circlip. All right, clutch going on. You've got your bushing and bearing here. It goes on like that. And you've got your basket. We've got the Henson Racing clutch basket on here. That's gonna go on. going just like that and you've got your washer goes right on there like that in your hub here like that lock washer going on and you've got your nut Good. nut is torqued and lock washer is flipped up that that nut can't move. Get your clutch plates on here. All right, time to get the stator on. So this is going to go on this way, just like this. And there's a line right there and a line on the case. Those two lines have to line up perfectly. Drift key goes on. And our nut. All right, let's start working on the cylinder. Try to get this top end done. So first thing we're gonna do, take off the reeds here.
Man, that fold looks really good. Got the carbon fiber reeds. Those look pretty good. Get that off. All right. Next, we're gonna be working on the power valve. So you can see it right in here, spinning. So you want it open when it's in the resting position. See that? Now typically, you want to clock these counterclockwise one turn after we get this set. And that spring tensions that power valve. You can see the spring. That goes in there. Looks like there's a set screw right there. Take that out. Just like that. And there we go. Now we're able to hone this out without getting shavings in the power valve. All right, we've got the old piston here. You can see it's a two ring piston. We're gonna quick measure the ring gap of the old piston and see what these were at. Just for fun. We'll take that ring off. Let's get this ring off here. Alright, so first ring going on first. Holy! <laughs> that is really bad. Oh my gosh. Look at that ring gap right there. Holy, that is bad. This had pretty decent compression too. And it ran good. Wow. That is a thick ring gap here. Thicker than that. Yeah, so it's <laughs> all four of these feeler gauges put together. So that's 90 thousandths of an inch, that ring gap was. <laughs> and it should be like 14 thousandths. <laughs> that is really bad. Let's see this one, wow. Look at that, it barely even squishes in the cylinder there. That's the same thing. There's just a huge gap there. I mean, it barely compresses. The ring gap is like right, right there. Wow. So good thing we're changing out the piston and rings. All right, it's always good practice to check and see if the sleeve is magnetic. And you can kind of tell there's a sleeve in here and it's not nickel cell plated. But you can see it's magnetic, magnet sticking, so we can safely hone out the cylinder. So what we're gonna do is just lube this up with a little bit of two-stroke oil. Get that in there. And then we can lightly hone this. There aren't any deep scratches or anything on here. And cylinder look good. Ball hone today. That's all that needs. Yeah, 
Perfect, so we're gonna wash this out with some soapy water. The cylinder dunked here. Alright, new bicycle piston. Let's open that up. Here are the rings. Got the clips there. Got the pin. Does this one have a bridge? Yes, it does. Let's see if it comes with holes already drilled and it does not look like it does, so we have to drill holes in it. So on this side of the piston, we're going to have to drill holes because there is an exhaust bridge right there. Alright, here are the rings. There is an N on this one. And it looks like there is an N on this one as well. Let's get the first ring in first. Yeah, that's a little better. <laughs> That's how the ring gap should look, right there. See how small that is? I'm guessing that's probably 14 thousandths. Just a tad bigger than 14 thousandths. I think it might be 15. Yep, 15 thousandths for the ring gap. That is good. Second ring going in. And you can see that's nice and tight. That's gonna be 15 as well, it looks like. Yep. Both ring gaps, 15 thousandths. That's perfect. All right, so what we're gonna do is drive fit this up. So we'll put the piston on. Got the bearing on there already. All right. Not putting any circlips in or anything. And we'll get the cylinder on. We don't want the rings on there either. Now, piston will go on. And we'll get the cylinder locked in place. And this will tell us where we can mark the piston here. Once we get this on. The piston is on the correct way, arrow pointing towards exhaust. We'll look up here and we'll draw a line where that bridge is on the piston. See that bridge right there? We'll draw a line on both sides so we know where to mark the holes. All right, we have our lines on our piston. You can see one right there, one right there. So if we go to the center of that, that's where we can drill our holes. So according to Weissco, you want to go 0.3 inches below the first line. I marked that one. And then for the second hole, you want to do 0.375 inches below the first hole. So we've got that marked out here. So like right, right there. That's going to be the second hole. And you want to use a drill bit that is between 0 0.06 and 0 0.09 inches. So we find a drill bit. Let's see where we're at. 0 0.076. So let's drill those two holes out.
right, both holes drilled. So we're gonna take some sandpaper, sand up those burrs, and we'll be good to go. All right, pistons all done. You can see those burrs are sanded off. Looking good. So now let's get the base gasket coated with some gasket maker here. Fist with brake cleaner. So it's all clean. All right, we can get these piston rings on. So it doesn't look like it matters which piston ring goes where. They look to be the same ring. You can see the N is facing up on the ring. And then same with the bottom ring. All right, both rings are on. Let's oil this up. Just using a little two-stroke oil. Oil the rings up here. Spin those rings around. Got the two washer spacers on there. Let's try to get this piston on. Get the other circlip pin. All right, torque specs for the larger nuts right here are 20 foot pounds, the smaller ones are eight. Right, head nut torque specs are 22 foot pounds. Crisscross pattern.
you want in? New gasket going on. All right, time to get this cover on. Got the bearing for the water pump gear here. Let's go in like that. Got a brand new gasket. It goes on like that. We're gonna grease this up so that it sticks. So the water pump has to align with the gear right here. So that's one thing we have to align, and then the shifter has to align with this as well. So it's a little tricky. All right, I wanna make sure that the water pump spins with the engine, so let's see here. Yep. That looks good. Let's get the water pump cover on. New O-ring gasket, and oil that up. And we can get that on to here. All right, engine is all back together, ready to be put back in the machine here. All right, engine's back in, coolant lines are hooked up, carburetor's back in there, mounts are on, 
Wiring's hooked up, so everything's good to go. Let's add some oil to this thing. This takes 900 milliliters. This is right in the case right here. Let's get some in there. Who thinks it's gonna fire up here? I really hope it goes through all the gears. I'm getting a little nervous here. yet. All right, there's a little bleeder screw right there on the head. Mix up some 41. Let's get that in there. All right, we've got cooling in there, fresh oil. Let's see if this thing fires up. Turn this to reserve here. Choke it. Choke it. All right, she fired up. Sounds really good. Sounds a lot more snappy than it was before. Wow. All right, now the real moment of truth. Will it shift properly into gear? I really hope so. Otherwise we did all this for nothing. Well, made it up to the land. We're about to find out if this thing shifts normally now. So whole engine, 
torn down and rebuilt. Let's see what happens here. All right, I brought the jet kit along too, just in case we need to rejet this thing. Still doing the same thing. What the heck? What is going on? Same exact thing. Slips out of gear. <laughs> Only at high RPMs though. So it'll go into all the gears, it just revs out and doesn't grab. So we're gonna try adjusting the clutch a little bit. Maybe it just doesn't have enough slack. I don't know, but it's doing the exact same thing. Oh man, I thought for sure it was fixed. <laughs> oh, that really sucks. Transmission looked perfect. Shift forks looked perfect. I don't know what's going on.
So it looks like it's missing second gear only. So shifts in the first fine, I shift up in the second. And if you rev it too high in second, it'll shift back down in the first gear or in the neutral, I should say. And it will stay in neutral. You try to shift it again, it'll do the same thing. But if you take a slow in second and shift to third, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth are all fine. So second gear is out of it for some reason. Even though all the gears look perfect, drum looks perfect, shift forks look perfect. <laughs> so I don't get it. I really don't get it. What the heck could be causing that? And I can feel the shifter like move because I'm keeping pressure on it when I'm shifting in a second. And I can feel it go back down into neutral. It'll like shift back out of neutral and hit my foot. So something's not staying connected, um, or tight, I should say, which is really bizarre. All right, so I'm stumped with this thing. Let's just see, maybe that bolt came undone. I wonder if oil's in here too. Oh yeah, oil's in there. I'm gonna tip it on its side here. Get it is. Oh yeah. So the bolt's still on there. Huh. All right, well, the first ride did not go as planned. Uh, second gear is still slipping. Every other gear is fine. First, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth gear are all fine. It's just second gear, it slips back into first or neutral. So, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, we took off the cover over here, and the bolt and washer are still in place, so it's not that. Yeah, I don't know, I'm stumped. So if anyone has any ideas, let me know in the comments, but yeah, I don't know, I'm out of ideas. This whole thing was torn down and rebuilt, checked over multiple times. All right, so this was a brand new plug. It was a little boggy sounding to me. It wasn't horrible, but uh, according to jetting, it's spot on. Maybe a little rich. So I'm guessing the needle clip can be raised one notch, and I'm sure that would take care of a problem. But yeah, it's pretty brown. You guys can't really tell on camera, but it's pretty 
pretty dark brown. It's almost perfect. So at least we're not lean. Make sure that's not milky. Nope, perfectly clear. Looks good. So no coolant mixing with the oil. So water pump seals are good. This thing feels like it has a lot more compression, so let's do a quick compression test. I'm just kind of curious to see what we get after the rebuild. I'm hoping we have quite a bit. That's way better than it was before. 180 pounds of compression. So that's pretty good. Definitely better than when we first bought it. <laughs> well, everything else on this quad checks out. 180 pounds of compression, oil still clear, and spark plug looks good. Like I said, the, the carb could probably go one notch up with the clip position, just so it leans it out just a tad on mid-range, but other than that, it's pretty much perfect, which is a real bummer because it slips in second gear still. So if it wouldn't have slipped, we would have been perfect. Um, but unfortunately, it slips and uh, there's nothing we can do about that. What a bummer. But things happen and sometimes things don't go as planned. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what to do with this thing. Um, do I tear it back down and just start throwing parts at it? Um, you know, replace the transmission, replace the drum, replace the shift shaft, replace the shift forks, or just tear it back down, inspect everything again, and swap one thing at a time. You know, I don't know what to do. It's very time consuming tearing it all down, replacing one part, tearing it all down, replacing another part. You know, it's, it's tough to figure out what to do. I really don't want to put more money into it than what it's worth, so it's it's hard to figure out what to do with this thing. But uh, yeah, if we just got to shift in second, we'd be golden. So if you guys saw anything in the video that I missed or maybe overlooked, let me know in the comments. But man, I'm I'm pretty much stumped on this one. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video, and until next time, we are.